Hi, welcome back to Storytime with Chosen and Crown Book, Women of the Bible. Hope you're having as much fun as I am. Before we get started, let me show you today's t-shirt. This one is a woman with her head in the clouds, and she says, pardon me, just talking to Adonai. <laughs> And this one's inspired by Exodus 24, 18. So, if you can't find me, that's where I am with my head in the clouds talking to Jesus. Alrighty then, let's get started. And we're talking about the Shunammite woman, and she's in 2 Kings 4. Here we meet the Shunammite woman, a woman who was wealthy, humble, and had everything money could buy her except for children. She was barren. From this story, we can assume she didn't complain about her barrenness. Instead, she focused on blessing others with what God had given her. One could suppose she felt she shouldn't pray for a child because when Elisha, the prophet, wanted to bless her with children, her reaction shows she was afraid to believe. God saw her selfless, giving, and caring heart. He saw the kindness she showed Elisha, a stranger, when she built him a room of his own to stay in when he came through town. On this day, God had planned to show us how he cares for his wholehearted, followers. He had plans for her to receive a special blessing from him, one that she hadn't asked for. One day, when Elisha went to the town of Shunem, where the wealthy woman lived, and she urged him to come to her home for a meal. She clearly had the gift of hospitality, and Elisha stopped there to eat every time he came through town. She told her husband she believed he was a holy man, and she wanted to also provide a place for him to sleep when he stopped in. Her husband agreed, so they built an upper room for Elisha to rest the next time he came through town. In response to her kindness, Elisha wanted to bless her and asked his servant to find out what she needed. In her humility... She declined, saying she was blessed and had all she needed. Elisha persisted, and the servant finally responded that the woman did not have a child. Elisha had him summon her back, telling her she would be holding a son in her arms the next time he visited. She pleaded for him not to get her hopes up. She was afraid to believe. But Elisha's blessing was true. So soon she became pregnant and had a son. The woman of God chose to follow him and serve him even through her pain of barrenness. She chose to trust Adonai through her pain. While she was blessing others, Adonai sent his prophet Elisha to bless her. This woman was simply being a good servant of the Lord, offering Elisha a place to stay when he came through town. Adonai always blesses those who bless his prophets. She was created for such a time as this, not only to help Elisha, but to also teach us a lesson about having a grateful and trusting heart even when we are hurting or don't have our heart's desire. Maybe this story resonates with you. Have you been afraid to pray for something? To believe in his provision for something? Perhaps you felt unworthy to ask for anything from Adonai. Maybe you thought you didn't deserve what you wanted. That it was impossible or too late. That Adonai was punishing you. Maybe you felt too blessed to ask for anything more. Don't be afraid to trust Adonai and believe for what's on your heart. It's also important to note that sometimes our desires 
do not match Adonai's plans for us. If you don't get what you think you want, trust that Adonai has something better for you. Only he can see the big picture and know what's best for your life. Her story doesn't end here. Beyond blessings of obedience, he also teaches us that even with unexpected blessings, there will still come trials, tests, and moments of stretching our faith. These trials take us deeper in relationship with him, and they help shape our character to become more like him. In this continued story, the woman's faith is tested and her obedience is blessed once again. This story shows Adonai is always working for us and wanting to keep us close. In the continuation of her story, the child had grown old enough to go out to the fields with his father. On this particular day, while the boy was with his father in the fields, he cried out in severe pain from his head. The servant took him back to his mother, and he laid in her lap until he passed away midday. As if the Holy Spirit guided and comforted her, she calmly took the child right away and put him on Elisha's bed in the upper room. She immediately left out on her donkey to find Elisha, telling her husband she was leaving, but that everything was fine. It wasn't that she lied to her husband. She truly believed all would be fine once she found Elisha. The woman had a deep level of faith that Adonai wants us all to have, an audacious level of faith to believe in the impossible. A belief Adonai will do what he says he will do. This mama was on a mission, and her faith was in Adonai to make this right. She set out in haste to find the prophet for help. When she found him, Elisha was surprised. Adonai had not told him she was coming. Elisha was anxious to hear what was wrong, knowing something must have occurred given her sudden appearance. She told him what happened, and he quickly sent his servant with his staff to go to the child. The woman would not leave Elisha's side, though, begging him to come back with her. He saw her faith and determination and decided to follow her back home. His servant came out to him as he arrived and explained there was no sign of life from the boy. Elisha went to the upper room, shut the door, and laid on the boy, eyes to eyes, hands to hands. As he stretched out on top of the child, the boy's body began to warm up. Elisha took a break after a bit walking around the house, then going back up to do the same thing again. Suddenly, the child sneezed seven times and opened his eyes. This reminds me of when Jesus had was healing a blind man. And the first time, he, he spits on the man's eyes. And the first time, he says, what do you see? He said, I see blurry, dark things moving. And then Jesus spit on his eyes a second time, and then he could see perfectly. Which means don't give up if your prayers aren't answered completely the first time. Keep praying and keep believing. The woman interceded for her child and had audacious faith in Adonai to do what his word says he will do. She believed he would heal her child. This is a fascinating story. Now, Adonai is not teaching us here that everyone will have the same ending to their story. However, it still teaches us to have audacious faith in our Heavenly Father, regardless of the outcome. So, this woman was blessed with a child 
she didn't dare pray or believe for. When he got sick and died, she still did not complain to Adonai. She did not complain to her husband. She didn't even complain to Elijah or his servant. She had every reason to complain, yet she chose to believe her faith in Adonai would prevail. She chose not to talk to anyone but the man of Adonai. This story is a great example that we need to take our concerns and request straight to Adonai, a prophet that hears from Adonai directly in this case. And here's the kicker. Remember, Elisha didn't know she was coming, and God tells Elisha everything. Adonai chose here not to tell Elisha ahead of time about the dead child. He chose to allow a conversation between he and the woman just like Adonai wants to have with you. Adonai will create opportunities for you to talk to him rather than just answering your prayer straight away. Upon hearing about the child, Elisha told the woman to go back home and she told him she would not leave his side. Her faith in the power of Adonai was firm and she was not leaving the man of God. We should all work to have this level of dependence on Adonai. Make sense? It says in 1 John's 5, 14 through 15, This is the confidence we have in his presence. If we ask anything that accords with his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, then we know that we will have what we ask for from him. The key there being, if it's in his will. Sidebar here. Oftentimes we pray for things that are not in his will. So when he doesn't answer that prayer, we tend to think he doesn't love us or care, but it's actually his protection for us for not answering the prayer for something that he knows we don't really need. So when he answers your prayer that's in accordance with what his will is for you, he will answer it every time. That's when you know when you're operating in his will for you is when you pray and those prayers are answered. So it appears Adonai did not intend for the child to die that day. The situation tested and grew the mother's faith in him. Adonai wants to teach you to have this level of belief. While your faith must be strong in believing the father hears, sees, knows, and has a plan, you must also remember his plan may differ from the outcome you seek. In this case, the boy was healed and returned to his mother. The woman never complained and never told Elijah to heal him. She never told Adonai what to do. She simply believed he would do something for her because her faith was strong that Adonai is a good father. Notice she didn't beg for a miracle. What she chose to do was cling to Adonai when she was hurting and full of sorrow. She turned to Father God for comfort and care. With audacious faith like that, it's imperative to believe that whatever Adonai plans for you is what he knows is best. Choose to trust him regardless of the outcome. And here's another tidbit. There's a difference between faith and belief. Faith is knowing that he can. Belief is knowing that he will. Think about that. I pray this story inspires you to trust Adonai and believe he loves you and is working a special plan for you in his perfect timing. Consider also, that this might be a test from Adonai to see if you will be obedient to him and take your faith and belief to the next level. Let's pray. Father, thank you for loving me. Thank you for your promises in your word, showing me how much you love me. 
Thank you for giving me what I need when I need it and what I need when I don't ask. Thank you, Father, for not answering my prayers when I can't see that they are not in my best interest. Thank you for protecting me. Thank you for putting a dream in my heart. Thank you for helping my unbelief. Thank you for never giving up on me. Thank you for your forgiveness of my sins. Thank you for sending your son Jesus to atone for my sins and live in my heart. Father, show me, teach me, lead me, guide me. Amen. So, reflection questions for today. What did this Shunammite woman's story mean to you today? What jumped out at you that you related to? What can you apply to your life today from her story? Study the story for yourself. Pray about it and ask the Holy Spirit to show you what he has just for you. Until next time, God bless you.